One of the problems with programming a microcontroller is how to get information out as to whether your program is working or not. LED lights are kind of nice. You can sit there and have the lights blink depending upon where you are in the program. An LCD display is much nicer. You can actually have information such as here's the value of the variables, here's the value of the different times. I like to write a C program to display a counter. This will build a clock so you can display hours, minutes, seconds, tenths of seconds. To start with, let's create a directory. I'm putting it under my, my documents 376 LCD demo. It's much easier starting with the working program than starting from scratch. So let's take this LCD demo program from Python Academy. When you click on it, that'll save a zip file. There's two files you need. The demo program, that's the main one, and the LCD port D, that's the LCD driver routines. Copy both those over to your directory. Now from MPLAB, let's go through Project Wizard. I'm going to create a C program called LCD Demo. It's using Epic 18F4620. The compiler is Hitech Universal Tool Suite, that's our C compiler. The directory is LCD Demo. And we're going to call this Demo, that's the name of my project, also the name of the main C routine. That's a notation I like because it helps me re remember which routine goes with which program. And the LCD demo.c is the main routine. One thing you have to kind of watch out for. In C, the standard way to do C is to include all the files over here in the source. I personally don't like that. Instead, I like to include it in the main routine. That way, if I include the routine LCD demo, this tells me everything I need. I don't have to remember which files have to be part of the project. What you can't do is include it twice. If I include LCD port D dot C over here, as well as here, I've double counted it, and that confuses the compiler. I've got two copies of every subroutine, and it doesn't know what to do. What the LCD port D routines do, These are the driver routines for the LCD display. You've got a wait millisecond routine. That tells it to wait. If you pass number three, it'll wait three milliseconds. Here's a pause. The LCD, you have to hold the pins high and low for about two microseconds. This kills 20 clocks, or basically two microseconds, so that when I send a pulse, it'll be high for two microseconds. Strobe is where you pulse the clock line. If the clock is tied to port D pin 3, it pulses it high for 20 microseconds below again. Uh, this is the guts of the program. You can send an instruction to the LCD display, such as to clear the display, move the uh, cursor. That's this guy. If I want to move to a certain spot on the display, I'll have to tell it which row I want to go to and which column. Address 80 is row 0, column 0, C0 is row 1, column 0, and so on. If I tell it to move to, to 3, it'll move to row, row 2, column 3. Write is how you write data to the display, such as I want to display the number 0. Note that everything is in ASCII. So if I want to write the number 0, I have to actually have to write ASCII 0. And the initialization, this you have to call when you start the display. This is the hoop you have to jump through to get the LCD to turn on. You basically have to send the instructions 3332280E0106 to get the LCD to turn on. The main routine, then, is going to use those drivers and first make port B input so I can sit there and count how many times I hit the button. All the other ports are output, especially port D. Port D is where the LCD display is connected. Turn on the LCD display, that's the LCD initialize, and start with seconds minus hours being 0, 1, 2. And to get that to work, I will move to row 1, column 0 on the display, send the minutes, send a semicolon, seconds, increment seconds, wait 100 milliseconds, and repeat. What it should see is seconds keep on incrementing every 100 milliseconds, displaying it as minutes and seconds. 
The notation here, LCD out, that's the subroutine up here. This is a convenient subroutine that we use quite a bit with the LCD display. When I pass data to it, it takes the number, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and pulls out each digit, one at a time. And I take the data of mod 10 that pulls off the 1's digit. Divide by 10 shifts it right, mod 10 pulls off the 100's digits, then the 10's, then the 100's, then thousands, pulls off the digits one at a time, saves them in an array A by, and then sends that array to the display, the 10,000's, thousands, tens, ones, hundreds in there somewhere. Shifted by 48, ASCII 0. Again, when you write, you're writing in ASCII. 48 happens to be ASCII 0, so I have to add 48 to everything, which is single quote 0. Also, for your convenience, if you want to do something like have the number 100 represent 10.0 second, there is a second parameter passed n that tells you how many decimal places you want to display. It just takes the integer of data and blindly inserts a decimal spot at that one place, like decimal place 1. So right here, seconds will count to 100. 100, actually seconds will count to 250. Uh, let's see, your integers count up to 65,000. 65,000 actually means 6,000 seconds, point zero. To compile this, go under Project, Build Options, Project. I have to make sure the code is offset by 800. And if you don't do that, it won't work. I have to do Project, Build. Notice the code has gotten quite a bit larger. It's 1658 bytes. It takes two bytes uh, per instruction. So this is actually 829 lines of assembly. You wouldn't want to write this in assembly. Hence the reason we're waiting until we get to C to use the display. If there's a mistake in the code like this, the C compiler will tell you where the mistake is. Right here. Once you generate your code, you're ready to download it. So let's download the code using Harper Terminal. Send a text file, and this was under LCD demo. .hex. And here's your program. Notice quite a bit larger than before. That's the joys of C. This is a 800 line assembly program. And time passes. Eventually it's done. Notice that port D is, has a light show. That's talking to the display, which I forgot to plug in. The LCD display just plugs into the top right here. I'll need to reset it because it has to go through that initialization routine to get the display working. What you see is the title lcddemo.c and here's your count. It's counting in seconds, minutes. The way that lcddemo.c appeared is right here. This is a convenient way to get messages to the display. I'll just declare a global variable message zero to be LCD demo.c, that's what appears in the first line. That constant just means save that information in program memory, not RAM. We've got 64K of program memory, only 4K of RAM, so we've got more program memory to play with in RAM. To get that to show up on the display is right here. After I initialize the display, I'll move to row 0, column 0, which is right here, and then spin through the array. Send each element of the display the message to the display one by one, so I get the lcd underscore demo dot c. Wait 100 milliseconds, then the rest of the program runs. If I then modify the code, when I get to 60, I want it to actually clear at 60 and increment minutes. Uh, you'll have minutes and seconds. Much more convenient way of reading it than what we had with in binary with the LEDs, uh, but the code is much more complicated hence the reason for using C. Uh, the part for converting this to minutes and seconds will leave us a homework assignment.